Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having a great weekend. We have quite a bit to get stuck into today, but the first order of business is yet more old leg benchmarks, this time for the i5 2600K. And this is thanks to WCCFTech.com who shared some benchmark results, which were shared by Tom Apisak and HXL over on Twitter. So, of course, you can find all those relevant links in the description below. So with all the preamble out the way, let's talk results, shall we? And let's begin by HXL's results. And it was a CPU-Z test of the processor. And according to the results here, at stock, the CPU scores 746 points in the single-threaded test and 70 and 58 in the multi-threaded. And then Tom Appysack's result, which allegedly showed overclocked performance, increases the numbers to 79x and 72xx points respectively. Now, fortunately, we do not know the clock speeds at which either of these tests were performed formed, but apparently the overclock score was taken from Windows 10 and the stock score is Windows 11. But it's all well and good for me to just throw numbers at you and what about some context? How does this place to 12600K? And honestly, I feel like the mid-range is the more important conversation for old like for a lot of people, you know. Obviously the flagship is the most powerful, the most exciting, especially for a tech nerd such as myself, but for many people, they are going to be looking at the mid-range CPUs for their upgrade if they decide to go with older like this generation, or if they want to stick with their current build or what have you. But to put it in some sort of context, we do see it obviously above the 11th gen Rocket Lake S series, which scored 746 and 65, 63 points in single and multi-threaded tests respectively. And the 12600K also crushed, and I do mean crushed, the Ryzen 5 5600X, which scored 624 and 48, 11 points respectively. And to put that into some context again, that means Old Lake is 19.5% and 46.7% faster respectively. And that is not too shabby at all, I'm sure you'd agree. Now, obviously, we do not know the official prices or any of that yet. There were some leaks which I discussed just the other day for Old Lake prices. So if you're curious to see what we're looking at at the moment, obviously, you can go check that out. But we are going to be finding out in just a few days exactly the specs and release dates and prices for these, as well as official benchmarks from Intel. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it because I feel like if the 12600K can be priced competitively enough, that result versus Rocket Lake and Ryzen is pretty damn impressive. But speaking of older Lake, we also have some benchmarks for one of the mobile chips, the 12900HK. And this is a Geekbench result, which was once again discovered by the folks over at WCCFTech.com. So of course you can find all the relevant links below. As much as the desktop segment is important for Intel and AMD, mobile is crucial as well. So let's take a look at what we can see here. Well, we can see that it's reporting the 12900HK at a 2.9 gigahertz base clock, which is likely the base of the efficient core. Now the clock speed, I would sure we could all agree that's not right. It's showing as 371 megahertz. And unless we've gone back like however many years in tech history, I'm going to go with that's probably being read incorrectly. But in terms of the score, it's 1851 for the single core and then 13256 for the multi-core score. And this particular processor has managed to smash the results of all known mobile chips released this year, including Tiger Lake, Zen 3 Mobile and even the Apple M1 Max, which only just debuted. Now, obviously, this is just a single Geekbench result, so we shouldn't ring the death knoll for either of those, any of those processes, excuse me, just yet. But obviously, this is pretty damn promising, and I hopefully we will get to see some mobile performance numbers from Intel when they reveal all of that good stuff in just a few days. And for our final Intel piece of news for this video before we move on to our next segment, Intel have reported earlier this week that they have powered on a single compute tile of their next-gen Meteor Lake processors. And obviously, Meteor Lake is so far in the future. Obviously, we have Older Lake, Raptor Lake, and then Meteor Lake. So this is way off. But it's pretty damn cool that they have powered on a single compute tile. And of course, Meteor Lake is expected to release in 2023. And we have a brief statement here from Pat Gelsinger, who said, quote, on Intel 4, we had taped out a compute tile for Meteor Lake, and this quarter it came out of the fab and powered up within 30 minutes with outstanding performance, right where we expected it to be. All told, this is one of the best lead product startups we have seen in recent memory, which 
speaks to the health of the process. Now, obviously, it is his job to kind of be the company's hype master, right? But it's still, fingers crossed, promising to hear, especially after all the 10NM memes of not that long ago. But still, I'm looking forward to seeing what Intel do on the 7NM process with Meteor Lake. But with that said, we're going to move on to our next segment, which is a brief visit to Camp AMD, as we have some news regarding AMD's Instinct MI200, better known as CDNA2. Now, obviously, MI200, otherwise known as CDNA2, is going to be, of course, based on an MCM design, as we've heard numerous times at this point, and thanks to Executable Fix over on Twitter, we now have some details on MI200 and he simply said, enough teasing, MI200 has two variants, MI250 and MI250X. And then here comes the juicy part, MI250X, 110 CUs, 1.7 gigahertz boost, 128 gigabytes of HBM2E, 500 watts TDP, 7nm. Now obviously this is a CDNA2 graphics card, but it's still insane, 110 CUs, 1.7 GHz boost, 128 uh, gigs of HBM2. Not exactly holding back on the brawn, let's just put it that way. And just to put that 1.7 GHz into some sort of context, that is a 13% increase over that of MI100. Now, obviously, this is not going to be something that you see in the everyday. MI200 is going to be powering three top-tier supercomputers, in, which include the US's Frontier system, the EU's Lumi system, and Australia's Satonic system. So this is going to be at the very forefront of these particular supercomputers, and it's just really cool to see. Obviously, it's this tech that is not really meant for you or I ever, but it is still so damn cool. With all that said, let's finish off today's video with some news from ARM as this week at the ARM Limited Dev Summit, which was for shareholders and whatnot, the company did reveal some of their next-gen graphics processing hardware that we are expecting to see sometime next year. And they revealed some performance numbers for this new technology and it looks like a significant improvement over the previous generation. It increases performance by two times compared to the current ARM Mali G710 in FP32. However, if you compare it to a slightly older uh, piece of tech, the 2018 ARM technology, it is almost five times faster, which is kind of nutty when you think that it's only, you know, roughly three years difference between the two. Now, obviously, all of these results at the moment are for FP32 machine learning workloads, and it's a little known how these new performance specs for the FP32 ML affect overall performance in watts and games and that sort of thing, but... I look forward to seeing what ARM actually produces here. Obviously, ARM is a company that's not as much in the spotlight as, say, AMD or Intel, but it doesn't mean they don't do interesting stuff. So it's going to be cool to get some more performance numbers for what's going on over at Camp ARM. Anyway, guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, do remember to like and subscribe. It does help out a great deal, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.